it's unclear to me what the advantage of the optimistic scheme is. The advantage of the optimistic scheme is you write less code in the sense that you don't have to acquire the lock. You can do it. It's a gamble, yes, yes. On the other hand, there are situations, say, if it's unlikely to have conflicts and if holding the lock would be expensive. One, one model for, for pessimistic concurrency is acquire the lock at the time that you present the current state to the user. And then if they edit it, you'll know you succeed. But if they don't edit it, throw away the lock, okay? So if you present, and, and think of a rich graphical user interface, you know, if they pick a customer off of a list and click open, then you open up the customer window and you put in the customer's name, address, phone number, okay? When would you need to acquire the lock before you display the data? and you need to hold the lock while the user is looking at the data. If the user planned to look at the data and not edit it, then you'd be holding the lock for a long time unnecessarily. If someone simply brought up something on the screen and then went for coffee, they're holding a lock on an object. If someone else wants to modify that object, they can't. They're prevented from doing so. The, the way you get around that is you write your application so that when they open a record, you present it read-only. And then they have to click on a button that says, lock this record. Or, you know, instead of reading to view it, you know, or when you open it, you, you put up a dialog that says, do you want to view or edit? Or you always put it up in view mode and then have a button that says, open up the fields for me to edit it. But they can still go to get coffee. And then they can still go for coffee. And so then you have to add to your application in addition to a, a button that says, open up the fields to view it, then you start a timer. And if they don't type for 60 seconds, then you lock all the fields again. And, and if you have an application with the odds of two people needing to see the same thing, at the same time as like going to happen once a month, that's an awful lot of overhead. And the alternative is optimistic locking, where if the transact, you know, you just present all the data, you let them edit it, if they succeed, you save it, if they fail, when they click the save button, you put up a dialog that says, I'm sorry, someone else modified this while you were sitting there looking. We're going to give you the new data, and you're going to have to type your changes in again. That's the trade-off. Um, and I think a legitimate argument can be made for each design. It depends on your application, yes. When, if you hit a, if you hit a right conflict, you can, you can, can you catch that conflict and then handle it in a specialized fashion? Yes, like so maybe you can, you can write your application so that you get notified which objects have a right conflict, you can then copy off the changes you've made into a temporary variable. You can do an abort, which gives you a fresh view of it, and then you can compare your changes to the new one. And you could say to your, you know, you could, but again, this is all programming. There's no way as the database vendor, I can tell what's right for you. But you could say someone updated the credit limit and someone else updated the phone number. I'm going to just say, well, I'll reapply my changes without even asking the user. On the other hand, if someone changed the phone number and someone else changed the address, that might be a legitimate change, or it might not be. I mean, if someone changed the phone number from Buenos Aires to uh, somewhere else, to Brazil, and someone else changed the address to Chile, then I would be inclined to think those two changes don't seem consistent. And so I'm going to need to ask the user. Yeah, there might be roots in the 
the overlapping information. So. Yes, yes. So it'd be, it'd be up to the application to decide if this conflict is legitimate and whether you want to replay it. So, yes, what, what you end up with is either creating a certain amount of complexity on the front end of making it safe that you'll never lose the user's work, or you put the work on the back end that says, you know, we'll never use the, lose the user's work, or you just put the risk on the user saying, it's too much trouble for me to prevent you from losing your work, so occasionally you're going to lose your work and you'll have to re enter And again, I have worked with people that I respect very much who would never put the user through the process of having to retype something. So they use, they use pessimistic locking. You don't change anything until you have a lock on it. But applications like that, you then have to have tools that say, who's holding this lock? Why can't somebody else change it? And then you have screens for system management. You have a help desk where you get calls saying, I've tried for half an hour. I can't modify this customer record. Can you tell me who has it? And then you have to identify the workstation that has it. You go to them and see that they're not there. And then you sign out their session, or you have timeouts, or something like that. It's an application design that Gemstone, as a database tool, gives you your choice. 